Okay, so welcome everybody uh, to the class of pretty good marketing. And uh, first, you have a question about the assignment. And uh, the assignment was related to product strategy. So, if you have a trouble with that, product strategy is what we talked about in the class. Not in this class, but in the strategy. What a product is, what, how we have different strategies to pursue. Uh, when we are making a new product, uh, we talked about the four levels and uh, the augmented levels of a product, uh, which should be true, how rich the product should be, how its uh, packaging should be developed, how it uh, should either have a big range of SPU or should settle for a limited range of SPU uh, while uh, having uh, different uh, <coughs> uh, avenue for uh, distribution and stuff like that. So uh, that is related to the product strategy. So if uh, you have to make the assignment, you have to consider all those variables and uh, then uh, do that, okay? So uh, just a second, and just need to come back. But I'm not there. Just, I'll be back. Sorry. Hello. Sorry, I'm back. Um, so we are talking about product strategy, and uh, so that's what you have to do. You have to talk about. Uh, Uh, talk about the different levels of product, the range of SKU, all of those things, and you can use that to uh, do the assignment. You can hear me, right? Sir, in last class, I see a PPT that I recorded. Voice is not clear. Voice is not clear. 
I want to ask there are a couple of things which we have mentioned but I have not mentioned those in the assignment. Is the assignment deadline over or I can edit and resubmit again? Yeah, that's okay. You can submit it again. The assignment is due today but even if you take a couple of days then it's okay. Actually, I have submitted it already, but uh, there are some minor things to be made. Okay. I mentioned I moved out to the camp. We submitted it again, no problem. Uh, but uh, there is something that uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that was the quiz. Uh, the quiz, uh, I gave you guys a quiz, and that was supposed to be done by last week. And uh, about uh, three, three people turned it uh, late, uh, they submitted it late, while 30 have not submitted it at all. They have not submitted it. Which includes some people, I think, who are right here. Yeah, after and Shima and the Rasha. The Dean. All of you have not uh, taken the quiz. Now that's a problem. Sir, yeah, I have. Sir, I have submitted. Well, it's not submitted here. Sir, I, so I have submitted already. I don't know why it's not showing to you, but I did. Can I do it again? Yeah, yeah, please do it again. Okay. So please take care of this that you have to submit the assignment and the quizzes because even if you do not attend the class, that's not as important because you can just view the uh, video later. But it's important to submit the assignment and quiz because that is the criteria for you to take the exam. You have to submit at least half the assignment and half the quizzes. Otherwise, you will not be able to take it. So please do that and uh, just make sure you. Sir, I'm Darakshan and. Yeah. Sir, I'm Darakshan and today is my first class. So I don't have any idea about quiz. So can I submit it to after class? The, question, the first question is why is this your first question? Uh, sir, I don't have any idea about the classes going on here. So right. I asked from my friend uh, last week, so Do you told me yesterday. You in our classroom or not? You were registered in our classroom when we were. Sorry? You were registered in the classroom when we were taking the classes at the university. Yes, sir. Then how do you not know about this? Uh, none of any. Saturdays I get uh, uh I get like uh, last from you last month from class. last one about this class so that's why. Were you on Google Classroom or not? Yeah, I have a Google Classroom, but last week I have like I asked for my friend like, uh, to have a code of Google Classroom or strategic marketing and I joined it. Why? Why last week? Why did you not join when? Uh, we did this in, in our university. We were already talking about these things at the university and share, and we shared this uh, code there, not not here. We already did so. We already made the Google Classroom first. That's the thing. Secondly, yes, sir, please, but at that time, I don't uh, have a, any of a, I have a connection I didn't have at that time, so I didn't join it and I joined it last. So I want to uh, uh, so at the time of the have a connection for one month. 
more than one month. No, no. When, whenever we were in class that time, when you were uh, tell, told us about the uh, Google yeah. Classroom. When the online so, class was started in time, March, it yeah, started in March. After that, mm -hmm. it has been uh, five weeks. And for five weeks, you did not bother to find out if there were if there any classes going on or not. How can this be? Yeah, I was uh, uh, asking from my friend, but uh, uh, none of any reply I get, and uh, many more classmates which I had known, so none of any reply I get, so that's why I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm unable to join this class. No, I'm sorry. This sorry I don't have any idea about it. How is it? This is not. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever it is going on. This is not possible for me to believe because it's not that this that you are enrolled in a course and you are not concerned about what's happening and if there is a class or not and you didn't ask anybody even if you did ask your friends and they didn't reply back you could have called the university you could have checked the university pages you could have done so many things you could have just emailed me sir i did but uh, yes, sir. But I didn't do this. Sorry. Yeah, you should have. So we lost a lot of work, and uh, you should have. You have to make up for it. Now you have to attend the rest of the videos and the assignments on time. Make sure that you watch all the videos that okay. you put up on uh, Google Classroom. The link are there. Okay. Firstly, uh, the name of these people. I would like. These people, Lenovo, who is Lenovo here, and who is PC? Yeah, I am Lenovo. So, then uh, please change the name to yourself. And PC, who is PC? PC, who is PC? No answer. If I don't get any answer, change your name, please. I asked this last time as well. Change your name. Always come with your full name. Who is PC? Nobody is there then. Um, who is PC? This name PC. Much further, are you PC? Are you having two different accounts? Okay. But I submitted the quiz again. Can you please tell me? I'll look it up. Yes. Yes, it's there. Okay, thank you. Okay. So let's get back to our let's in fact let's start our topic for today. Um Firstly, I have to uh, tell you guys that uh, the the first assignment is in. We will have many quizzes and many assignments. So be sure to keep checking 
the uh, Google Classroom and be sure to, uh, to watch the videos that I've put up on YouTube. Uh, I think the, the recording quality of uh, this WebEx is not that good. It doesn't uh, record the videos that well. So I'm going to try probably Facebook Live or some other thing from next time. Uh, even though uh, uh, the still the the audio are clear, so we can still hear that lecture. Uh, I will also post some videos, hopefully, so you can see the videos on the YouTube and also on Google Classroom. So let's start, and today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, advertising strategy. Advertising strategy. Uh, so uh, actually, this is the fourth uh, key marketing mix, uh, which is promotion. And the promotion in many cases, one of the ways to promote your product is uh, through advertising. So what is advertising, what are the different uh, strategies and how do we use that. I'm going to also use a slide so, and I'll share that slide after that as well. And then uh, that will help you to understand the different things. So uh, when we talk about uh, advertising, firstly what is advertising? Advertising is Whenever it's uh, the definition by the definition, advertising is uh, paid in impersonal communication with an identified sponsor uh, who uses mass media to persuade or influence an audience. So the keywords here are uh, paid impersonal communication. Paid, it's always paid, advertising is always paid. It's impersonal means that it is not uh, communicated to a person. Uh, it, it is never targeted towards a person. It's always impersonal. And uh, uh, impersonal communication with an identified sponsor. The sponsor is always identified in an advertisement. There can be no advertisement in which we don't know who is advertising. Because there are strict rules uh, that advertisers have to follow to uh, because uh, there are guidelines for ethics in advertising. There are uh, rules of what you can show in an advertisement. There are rules for what you can uh, uh, describe or what you cannot say. These are certain words. There are certain products that you can show, certain products that you can not advertise. So all of these things matter when the sponsor is identified. If the sponsor is not identified, the rules will not matter. Therefore, the sponsor is always identified. Uh, and then uh, this, uh, with an identified sponsor who uses mass media, which means advertising is always done on mass media. That means we say mass media, we mean uh, a medium that uh, has access to a large number of people. And when we say large number of people, it means thousands more, thousands and not just hundreds or dozens. So thousands at least, uh, these many people are uh, there and uh, on mass media, so examples of mass media can be radio and television, newspapers. And uh, digital uh, avenues like YouTube and Facebook and Google. So all of these are mass media now. Uh, we also have the outdoor media which can be considered as mass media as well. So uh, then it uses this mass media to persuade or influence an audience. Persuade or influence an audience means that influencing means to change the attitude of somebody. 
while uh, persuade means to change the behavior of somebody. Now we want to do both, and sometimes we are trying to do both, sometimes we are trying to do just one. Now let's take an example. Uh, if we are uh, trying to uh, tell if something is uh, is good enough to be bought, for example, we say that uh, if we say a uh, a certain product like a mahine bhar ka uh, mahine bhar ka uh, abal. So, yeah, ek chamcha jo hai wo itni sari plate hai wo dega. So, ek chamcha vim le aur usse bhot sari plate hai. So, this is actually trying to persuade us to buy that product because it's telling that it's quite cheap and it will help me to be converted. This is persuasion. Actually, uh, trying to persuade me to buy that product or persuade buy more of that product. While influencing means to change the attitude of uh, people and uh, uh, change the attitude of people by uh, telling them about something but not necessarily saying that they should buy it. So when we are not talking about buying but just mentioning if something is good, it's just about uh, building a, uh, a building an attitude towards it. So it can be both, it can be persuasion plus influence or it can be just persuasion or just influence. These can be the uh, uh, the objective of an advertisement. Okay, okay. CC is here again. Who is CC? Please mention your name. Who is this? Who is this? You can type it down here, or you can say it on your phone. Let's see if there's something so that you can see going. No? So, PC, I'm going to take you out of the room because you are not showing anything. Abdul Rahman, so what's your problem? Why don't you say anything and yeah, please change the name because it's not possible to identify you. Okay. So, um, that's uh, what advertising is. Now, let's talk about uh, advertising. Um, or you can say strategies in the long run. The question is, the first question is to, is to uh, first see if we do need to advertise or not. Should we advertise in the first place or not? Now, uh, for example, if there is a Thelewala, let's say there is a Thelewala who is um, who, uh, who sells aloo piyaz. Uh, it is quite near me and it's on it. Everybody else can hear me, right? So problem in your voice. So other people can hear me, right? Please check your Yes, 
ओके तो
and how much will we need to advertise tomorrow for example let's take up a product like uh, shampoo so shampoo again shampoo is another product that uh, that has changed the behaviors of people about uh, 30 years 30 odd years ago uh in about i think in 1991 en en g introduced shampoo uh called uh, head and shoulders and pantene so uh, before that uh, we just had sunsilk and all of these shampoos but a lot of people used uh, soap for to wash their hair uh, then as well uh, so at some point uh they people started using shampoo but how did they know if they were supposed to do this so they had to be educated and then then the brand came in by the and they they took about uh 6 or 7 years just to establish that these were brand so they advertised a lot if you remember uh, most of you don't would not remember but some of you might in the 90s there used to be a lot of uh, advertisement for shampoos a lot uh, they are not so much right now because now the shampoos have established their brand and now they just need to keep on moving so they just uh, uh, what they do is just keep recalling reminding the people that there is a shampoo called pantene and there is a shampoo called head and shoulders there is a shampoo called sun silk or clear they just keep on doing that they don't need to educate the people about what the shampoo stands for what it does if they should buy it or not very uh, that's not required so the frequency of advertising has uh, gone down the frequency of the number of campaigns has gone down because it's an established category now when the product category is established then we don't need as much advertising so in the initial days the advertising cost initial days of a brand the advertising cost are high and slowly they gradually they decrease so uh Uh, we can understand that uh, whenever we are trying to think about advertising we should know that if we have a 5 year plan then we should understand that whatever budget we have we should we have to divide it in uh, different uh, parts uh, the first part should be the introduction part has more of uh, the advertising as compared to the later part just a second i'll be back sorry it's cutting us all Sorry. Sorry that. Uh, so um, the frequency of advertising and and the and the dividing the budget in such a way that initially we need more advertising when we are introducing a brand and then slowly the brand uh, uh, we go for lesser frequency in advertising. so we have to understand that the frequency of advertising is different for different uh um, times uh, in the different in the life cycle 
that has to match that. For example, in the life cycle, we, when we are in, in the production phase, we need more advertising. In the growth phase, we need less advertising. In the maturity phase, uh, it has even less and so on. So we have to understand these things. Uh, now, if you do not know this, then we'll discuss the different, uh, just in case, we'll discuss uh, the different uh, ways that we can uh, change the uh, frequency of advertising. The first uh, is called the fight and flight strategy. The fight and flight strategy means that uh, the, uh, the fight and flight simply means that you are going ahead and fighting and then flight means to run away. It means that you come for a certain point certain uh, uh, time period and you advertise a lot in that time and then you run away then then you are nowhere to be seen for a while now uh, who advertises in this in this manner you know for example in about 10 days time 10 12 days time uh, the uh, ramzan is uh, just about to start so we will see uh, who uh, Certain uh, brands who will advertise a lot for the next 40 days. They will probably start in about five days' time. We will see a huge number of advertisements from cooking oils. We will see huge number of uh, advertisements from uh, condiments, which means the ketchups and sauces and mayo and all of that. And uh, we will probably see a lot of advertising of um, those kinds of uh, uh, food, uh, for example, that is usually uh, had in, in Akhar or in Terry, like dairy products, milk, and uh, all of these things. So uh, these things, uh, um, when they do advertise, then we see that there are many cooking oil brands that you will see in this, this city days and then you will not see these brands for the rest of the year. You will not find a Ruoza ad anywhere in the uh, any time apart from the month of Ramadan. So these are the fight and flight strategies. They come for a certain time because they know that their, their season is on and they just advertise in this time. So um, you will see that when the when the summer is starting, uh, we see the uh, air conditioners at for air advertisements for air conditioners and uh, refrigerators that are that are probably more infrequent than in, at others in other seasons. We see uh, that just before the Bakrayd, we see the advertisements for deep freezers for certain reasons and uh, we, we see these, uh, we have the seasons for every kind of product. So that's called the fight and flight strategy. The other possible uh, strategy is called the pulsing strategy, pulsing. Now the pulsing strategy means that uh, there is a pulse, just like the human pulse that uh, goes on uh, for uh, about 72 times per minute. So there is a pulse that is going on. It's not just a straight line, but a pulse. So pulsing strategy means that you are regularly advertising, but you are not all advertising all, uh, all the time. So uh, now which kind of product should go for um, the uh, pulsing uh, Strategy. Uh, the brands that do not need to advertise all the time, which means they, they are already in the mind of the consumer, they just need to be reminded again once in a while to remember that, that you have to do this. For example, um, telecom campaigns, you will see that uh, they are now in a closing uh, strategy. They come for about a month, they have their advertisements, then they are out for about two months, and then they come for one month, and out for two months, and so on. 
and uh, we can see uh, all these kinds of uh, advert uh, advertisement uh, grants that are that do not need to be uh, shown all the time, but they just come and remind that they exist so that people do not switch to other them. Uh, these are this is called the funding strategy. Then we have the uh, the continuous strategy. The continuous strategy means that you are advertising all the time. Now, why would you want to advertise all the time? Now, there are certain brands that that there are certain products that are actually sold on uh, that of because of the impulse of people. When they see a certain advertisement, then they are influenced to buy that product. For example, a typical example can be soft drinks. Now, soft drinks is, a, is something that uh, whenever we see a particular advertisement, we are influenced by that uh, advertisement to buy soft drinks because we are tempted to have that uh, soft drink. When we are tempted to have it, then it uh, likely that we will buy it whenever we get the next chance to buy it. Uh, but this won't be the case in, for example, a toothpaste. So, a to if you see a, pro if you see a toothpaste advertisement, it's not going to happen that even if my toothpaste is, uh, is uh, mostly unused, even then I go and buy a new toothpaste. That won't, match. that won't happen. Instead, if I see the advertisement of an Toothpaste, and I do want to buy it. Still, I would wait for the next month and then buy it. Which means we are not motivated to or influenced to buy that thing as uh, early as possible, or in the next chance that we have. So uh, uh, these these types of products like toothpaste usually use a pulsing strategy because they just need to remind that uh, you need to buy this product. So usually we see those things that are bought in a monthly ration of the home. They usually use the pulsing strategy, and uh, the ones that are bought on day-to-day -day basis, they usually employ the uh, continuous strategy. But uh, there, there, it's all it's at the discretion of the brand. Some brands like Surf Excel have uh, used continuous strategy for years. They do it even though it's uh, uh, it's not likely that uh, uh, people buy such Excel out of um, an instant motivation. Still, they use that probably because they want to keep a fair distance from their uh, competitors. So they want to just bombard uh, the uh, target market with advertisements all the time. Uh, but you see there main competitors like Arial and Guide, they don't usually use a continuous strategy, they use a pulsing strategy because they have less advertising budget as compared to Perfection. So these are different strategies uh, used by, uh, by uh, different companies. They usually have, uh, they choose between these on the basis of the nature of the product, the, how people act to, how people behave towards that product. Say, are there any seasons in the demand of that product? Is that product they bought on a day-to-day -day basis or a monthly basis or whenever you feel like doing it? Or maybe there are certain kinds of uh, products or services that you only buy once in a lifetime or very few times in a lifetime, like refrigerators or, uh, or uh, uh, going, uh, enrolling in a university, you do that only. You do that typically once in a lifetime. So those times are usually done in a fight and flight setting. There is no use advertising a university when uh, in the mid of a semester. It doesn't make sense. So you will always use a fight and flight strategy for a university advertisement. So um, and next we then they have established that we have different strategies when it comes to the frequency. Next we have to find out what kind of strategy should we include in the communication of the whatever brand that we are doing. So what's the communication strategy? So there are many models used by in advertising and we will discuss some of them. 
So I've downloaded a particular uh, you can say this is a presentation and I'm going to share that presentation here with you right now. There you go. So these are different uh, you can see it, right? Advertising models. Okay, good. So these are different advertising models. Let's go through them quickly. The first one is the same model used as uh, the the communication, basic communication uh, model, which is. Uh, Yeah, the basic communication model is the ADA model, which means the attention into desire and action. Attention means to grab the attention of somebody and then having an interest and uh, uh, trying to get people to be interested in it and then creating a desire to buy that thing, which, is, which means the first vision comes here. So first we have the attention, then we have an influence to, uh, to to build an attitude towards that product, and then we have a desire which is to persuade people, and then a call for action to how to actually go and buy it. Some kind of phone number, some kind of uh, Facebook page, some kind of reference to a store where you can buy that product. It can be anything. So that's the basic. Ada model that's used in advertising. I'm going to discuss the models first and then I'm going to discuss how we can choose the different models according to our strategy. So this is the Ada model. For example, this is interesting because it catches your attention because a dog has two eyes on top of each other. And then you understand that this is just like a camera that has two, that uh, the a phone that has two cameras. And then we have uh, the Dagmar model. The Dagmar model means this is this is an abbreviation for defining uh, defining advertising goals. D A D for measured advertising results. Now this means that we have goals and we have results that are measurable. So advertising is only going to produce the kinds of uh, uh, the kinds of results that are measurable. Now what is measurable? Measurable are sales are measurable. Um, what measurable traffic is measurable. For example, if we have an advertisement, we say that the impact of the advertisement is that more people are buying that product. But it's not always that we are just looking for a product to be bought. For example, there is a shopping mall that advertises itself. The results of that advertisement will be more traffic in that uh, shopping mall. Uh, it doesn't really matter if that uh, if those people go and buy the products that are sold inside the mall. That the the objective of the advertisement is to gain more traffic. So traffic is one of the it can be objective. It can be uh, a certain kind of uh, uh, you know customer base that you have, it can be referrals, anything that is measurable in numbers. What it cannot measure is attitude. It cannot measure opinions about things. It cannot measure if people have a certain feeling about it. So feelings and and uh, uh, all of these things are not measurable in uh, the DAGMA model and hence they are not included in the advertising goal. So when we have these these kinds of products, for example, we are um, looking for a product that is very uh, function oriented and doesn't have uh, image benefit a lot. 
uh, it can be for example um, um, an air conditioner or a microwave oven. So a microwave oven uh, is bought not on the basis of how it looks or its color or its the aesthetic value but mostly because of its functionality. So Dagmar can actually this model is good for advertising of a microwave oven which because it tells people that we will only advertise a measurable uh, result which is the sales or more people talking about that product. So it starts with unawareness and then awareness and then comprehension and conviction and uh, which means the unawareness from unawareness to awareness we first tell them about that this product exists then we talk about the details of the product now this is important comprehension and conviction conviction means the firm belief that this idea this thing works so when we are talking about the product at length it means that we are talking about some product product functionality Therefore, comprehension and conviction is there, and then we have the call for action again, the same thing. So this is another model, and then we have this. For example, this is uh, about unawareness to awareness. Like uh, you don't go and spoil the uh, nature, you should. Uh, we should keep ourselves to ourselves. One ad is about that. You can see that. And then we have the Runberg model, which is about awareness and trial and reinforcement and measure. Now, awareness and trial. Now, this, the, the key element here is trial. When we are saying trial, it means that a certain product is, uh, the value of a trial is good for certain products as compared to others. For example, uh, a type of uh, food that we eat, uh, some snacks like chips or goods, uh, it's very likely that we get fond of something only when we try it for long. So we can try out like uh, uh, tens of uh, biscuits or uh, chips or, or juices or soft drinks uh, to keep on, uh, you know, discovering new flavors and then we can know which of them that we like and which of them we don't. So we do experiment a lot in this, these kinds of categories. But we don't uh, try uh, new brands when it comes to products like cell phones. We don't do that. Let's try out this new brand that just came in just for this while. I'll buy a cell phone that that came that just came out. We don't use it in trial because one, of course, it is more sensitive. The brand value is very sensitive, and also the price is high. But even if the price is uh, low. Uh, some, in some cases, you would not buy a certain thing. For example, as low well as uh, as a, a, a hundred rupee lipstick, uh, uh, women would not like to buy a lipstick just to try out a new brand because it's a sensitive matter. It's, it's to be used. So trial is used for those kinds of products. That that uh, that we, try, we 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 find that if they are good or not. So and then reinforcement means to uh, to provide a reassurance in the advertising that this actually works. And then nudging, which means to just remind the people again and again. So in this model, we use the pulsing strategy used along with this model. We keep on reminding that we exist. And we can see the, the, the tips and uh, juices and these categories usually use the function strategy. A car is an example of this model because, uh, and we can try it out and we can see how it works and then we can buy it. Then we have the drip model, 
which means to differentiate and then remind, inform, and persuade. Now, the drip model is very important uh, to understand when we are operating in fierce competition. Then it's uh, and it's the brand, the switching cost of uh, products are low and it's possible to, to shift from one to another very quickly like for example uh, in these days the tele telecom uh, industry has lower switching costs as compared to the industry our industry that was 10 years ago because then it would not be easy to change your uh, number or to go to switch to another uh, operator very easily, but now you can because you can keep your number, you can keep your contacts, you can keep your packages, and everything will apply to you. So you won't have to change a number. The simplest thing is that, and that reduces the switching cost. The switching cost means the cost of switching from one brand to another. So when that's there, then it's easy to apply the drip model because you just differentiate your product. From your competition, you don't say that we are good, we say we are better than the other. And we only use that when the competition is fierce and the only way to get more market share is to take that market share for, from somebody else. So when that is so in our, what we call our red ocean, then we can use the drip model. So we usually use in the red ocean, red ocean competition, and we and then we use we keep on reminding people and talk about the brand how it is better better and how you should uh, it's better for you as compared to the other. So this is the drip model and uh, this is the the VIP uh, the checklist of the David Bernstein checklist of VIP. So it has has you have the following qualities whenever we are using advertising and uh, the first is visibility then identity then promise and single mind uh, this uh, this is this talks about visibility and identity and promise and then single mind visibility means that it shows the product as much as possible very popular checklist to go when we see the Pakistani advertisement, they show the product a lot as compared to the Indian or the American or the European advertisement you will see, you will not find them showing the product a lot. Instead, they focus on more on the ideas because their, um, their target markets are more literate, they, are, they have more uh, comprehension, they have better attention span as compared to our uh, population. And since our population has no uh, attention and it means they just want, they, they just have a few seconds to look at the advertisement before, before they change their attention to something else. So we need a high level of visibility for these kinds of target markets. And especially for those kinds of products that uh, that are sold on the basis of their packaging and we go to a certain store, we look at that product and then we buy it like chips or uh, milk or uh, chocolate or perfume. These things, uh, uh, the weightage of the look of these, these things and the packaging of these things matter a lot in the decision making process. For the, this the uh, checklist is very important for these kinds of products. Then we have the identity and the promise which means that this says that we should talk about if the, what the product stands for, what it will deliver, how great will that be, and then keeping it to those a few things and being single-minded about it, not trying to sell everything to the customer. So in this model we see that. Then we have uh, Apple is a good example to see the script model because it has more visibility about that product, it has strong identity, strong promise, and single identity. The DMP model, the decision making process model, is pretty simple. It just actually uh, walks you through the decision making process. It says, Do you need this? 
if you need this, then you should look for this kind of product. If you look for this kind of product, then you will see that our product is better than others. Therefore, you should buy this product, and if you like this product, then we should talk about it to others. So it actually walks you through the whole process of uh, of the decision making while telling you to buy uh, this product. So this is uh, very good when uh, we are talking about a product that is uh, in which we actually want the people to to understand how they are going to search for that information and they are going to how they are going to feel or behave when they are in a superstore and when they are counting this product then they will think about if we need this product if they will look or to compare with other brands. All of these things matter a lot. You will see especially those kinds of uh, uh, people talking about uh, those kinds of brands talking about it in, in terms of in those kinds of competition and uh, when there is perfect competition where there is a large number of sellers and there is a certain product that is very confident about itself, like airlines sometimes they say that you, you uh, look at our fares and look at other fares, you want to go and search for the best fare, go, go, uh, go and do it and compare our fares with others so that you know that ours is the best. Uh, and then you, you actually help them in evaluating the alternative so that they are more confident in buying your product. So this is about that. You can see it. Remind to find the parameter, search for information, evaluation of alternatives, combining the terms of purchase, purchase, post purchase, use all of that. And then we have the the PLC model. What I talked to you about that uh, the campaign, the launch campaign that I talked about, and the teaser campaign, the pre launch campaign, that this tells about when we should advertise, what kind of advertising, but in production, we should have a launch campaign. In the growth phase, we should have the campaign to maximize sales, which means we are talking about more persuasion than influencing people, talking about the product, how you can get more of this. In the maturity phase, we have more tactical campaigns, which means we want to establish this as a norm in their daily life that they should keep on buying this product again and again. And then in the decline phase, we usually see if we, we should advertise or not. If we should, the, the objective of advertisement is only to, to keep a certain threshold of people who still buy our product or just keep the goodwill of the product in place. So this is the PLC model. The mass flow. Hierarchy of needs model. The Maslow's model uh, is another type of model that advertising advertisers can use. It means that we just see what kind of, uh, what label, at what label should we advertise. Should we talk about the biological and physical needs only? Should we talk about the safety needs? Should we talk about the team needs? Should we talk about belongingness? Or self-actualization, we don't usually talk about self-actualization, but we do talk about the rest of the four, usually. Uh, now, the, here's the thing. Even if it's the same product, it can use multiple labels. For example, if you have clothing. So, clothing can be, uh, say, a dress shirt can be sold on the basis of, on the first label that if you want to have a good comfortable shirt that feels good, it's just, it, it will, uh, you can buy it and it will go on for a long time, so it will be very cost effective for you. Simple things about the clothes. 
or a, a shirt. So that's the biological need. And then we have the safety need that this shirt is going to be with you for uh, to be with you, and it's not it's not going to fade away. The uh, the color is not going to fade away, or the stitching will not get torn off. Or anything of that sort. So it's kind of a security thing that what I'm buying will be in like that. It can the same dress shirt can be sold on the basis of belonging as like that when we buy this shirt, then people will like you, we will have better relation, your family will be uh, will look at you like uh your friends will uh, will uh will find you in good shape, all of these things. Or the same dress shirt can be on the esteem mode that when you present with this shirt, then you will look great. And when you, when you attend the meeting with this shirt, then you will be praised. When you will do an interview with this shirt, then you will get hired and all of those things. So usually we can use this Maslow and pick the right model, uh, right hierarchy uh, and the level of the hierarchy for the certain kind of product. And then do it for that. You're not buying a card, you're buying a belief. So taking something that is just basic like transportation and changing it into an esteem or even a self actualization. The Mecca's uh or the means and chain theory Means and conceptualization of components for advertising strategies. Means end. Now, what does this mean? Means end means that you actually have an end and you say that in order to achieve that, you need to have this. In order to achieve that, you need to have this. For example, you say that you want to be uh, confident and you want people to like me but your complex and is not fair so you should use this kind of screen and this is going to uh, make you achieve make you uh, achieve that benefit to get to that level of fairness where people will like you for your complex. These kinds of uh, advertising strategies can uh, can be done. So you can see for example fair and lovely uses the strategy of uh, saying that you are making people more confident than giving them of their complexion. That's a mean and same theory. I mean when model. So, like the pot milk campaign tells you that you should have milk because it is healthy and it will give you this self-respect and wisdom and pleasure and happiness and all of that. We get the idea how different uh, strategies work for different kinds of products and how you can use them for your product. So you have to actually, uh, here's the thing, uh, just uh, wrapping it up. Uh, when you have different strategies, you have all these models, then you have to make sure that the product nature, the company's image, the core competences that you have, the competitive advantages that you have, the brand strategy that you have, the positioning that you have, the target market that you have, all of them are suited to the right advertising model. When you do that, then you are able to have an effective campaign, not just in the short term, but in the long run. So you also have to define if you are going to use a certain model for the first year, and then you are going to shift to another model in the, in the two years time, then set to another model in the five year time, for example, you are using the, uh, um, like the, for example, the drift model when you are entering a fierce competition and you want to be seen different. But then after a while, you just want to be seen as, uh, as 
a brain that is separate from everybody. It doesn't care about anybody else because it's an, a premium brain. So you shift from that competition, fierce competition, and you move to a mean brain or a, a massless hierarchy model. So that will change in, in many years' time. So you have to understand how changing these models work and how they have a different uh, impact on your overall study. So that's that for today. If you have any questions, you must ask right now. And uh, I'll upload the video in about two, two hours time. It takes about an hour or two to, uh, to change the format. So I'll do that. If you have any questions, please, you can ask now or you can write the video later. Yeah, Hello? Yeah. Sir, can you take my uh, quiz? It's uploaded or not? Okay. okay, sir. Uh, and the second thing is, sir, that you have told me that you have to tell me about this strategy. So, now you have to upload this slide on Google Class and upload it later. The slide as well as Reflection. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. For oh, anybody else? In fact, I. Uh, hello? Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, sir, can you confirm the name of this strategy and which is? Uh, form came for a very short time, but uh, they had advertised huge. Can you confirm the strategy name? The five and flight strategy. Five okay. and flight. It come for a very, it come to five for a very small time. You heavily invest in the frequency of the uh, of the advertisement, like I told you the example of Ramadan, in which the cooking oil, almost many even in in fact, you will see some cooking oil names that you haven't heard of this list. They even come and advertise in this time. So they heavily invest. You will see these uh, key uh, advertisements. You will see all of them in this time. So I've, I've posted the uh, advertising model the slide to you guys. Already, I'll upload the video when I want. And uh, uh, just in case you haven't seen that post, if you uh, uh, join uh, that Facebook group that I've made, I've posted a link here for the Department of Marketing so that you can have all the marketing students at, on one page. So, excuse me, can you hear me? Sir, you are wrong. Okay, name. Okay, I am Adam Yakar. I change करने की कोशिश कर रही हूँ पर अभी हो नहीं रहा. आप कहेंगे मैं या टेंडेंस बात कर दें? I have told you guys. Okay, I am telling it for the last time today that your attendance. Does not matter in your final exam eligibility. It's just there for a record that there was a session taken and there was an attendance. Even if you don't have the attendance here, you will still be able to take the final exam. There is no requirement for the attendance. So even if you are absent, don't mind it. Doesn't matter. So all of you, please, instead of worrying about that, just try to focus on the lecture from next time. Sir, you have an assignment, I have submitted it in the link, so you will get it. Thank you. Thank you. If you have submitted it, then I will tell you. 
I have eleven people who have turned in. Who is it? Anand Yadav, right? Yes, I have turned. Yes. Anybody else? Any question? No question. So. Sir. Yeah. Sir, आप मेरा नाम भी चेक करके बता दें कि आपको मेरा assignment receive हुआ है या नहीं क्योंकि मैंने कोई भी दिया था आई डोंट नो व्हाई वो submit क्यों नहीं हुआ. Yes, I got the assignment. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so let's call it an evening, and we'll meet uh, around the same time next Sunday, six fifteen to thirty, around this time. And uh, just just be sure to keep on taking the quizzes and the assignments. Okay, thank you, and a lot of good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.